So good morning or good night, depending on or where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. Today, I have Steve Ramsey from the band Satan, but oh, I have him uh, as audio only. So Steve, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you. Very good. Getting good. ready to go on tour next week. Yeah, your yeah, the record's coming out soon, and uh, this is your third record with Metal Blade Records, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the great, great record company. So, uh, so yeah, you, I know you guys started way back in the '80s, and you took like a hiatus, and you've been back now. Uh, how different uh, has it been for you guys this second time around? Um, well, it's been a bit more fulfilling. <laughs> you know, the the first time around, it was uh, it was a bit sort of disarrayed. We we got together, we made a, an album that we thought was really great, and then the first press that we got in Kerrang magazine and Odd Shop magazine, the only two countries, Holland and the UK, where we were we were playing or whatever, um, bad reviews. So being young and naive, and uh, we thought we were doing something wrong. And then we had all the name changes and all that shit, you know. And, probably, uh, what, probably some people just because of the name of the band. Uh, maybe that's who knows, but yeah. So, but uh, if you think about it, you know, lots of magazines have come and gone, and you guys are still here. Yeah, exactly. And I think now, um, I think Satan, the the, the name was uh, it, it meant a bit more back then. It was a bit more controversial than it is now now it's just like the name for a heavy metal band it's no big deal you know but back then it was uh like it, it, it took it, some people took offense at it yeah no of course you came out in the 80s when it was like the craze the the people thought that heavy metal was uh, diabolical and evil so yeah. yeah it was it was what i was young at the time but i do remember hearing that that was yeah, like everything that sounded like that was evil so uh, so yeah, the new album, uh, it's going to be out soon. So tell me a little bit about like, uh, with songs in Crimson that comes out of September 13, like, uh, what has changed with, with the sound, with the sound of the band, uh, on this newer release for you? Um, there's not, there's not a lot different about it compared to the other albums. Um, there's a couple of things that we noticed when we, when we finished writing, is uh, none of the songs are um, like massive long epics. There's nothing over five minutes on the album, I think. So that's a bit strange for us because there's normally two or three that go into a, like a big sort of long epic mid sections and stuff. And I think uh, these are more like um, to the point, the songs to the point, you know, where where we're not meandering around, we're, we're getting the point over. It's... um quick and fast yeah and it's kind of like how we wrote the album as well because uh, sometimes we had problems uh to trying to choose and trying to work out what we wanted to do and on this album it's just been one song after the other just yeah great 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 done no problem okay and so the i'm i'm showing the album artwork for songs in crimson which is a pretty cool artwork there's like this call coming out of the building uh, well, it's like a manufacturing plant. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration for the album artwork. The, the, the song on the album called Deadly Crimson is basically, um, it's kind of an anti-capitalist song, anti-capitalism. Um, the building represents, um, the big shiny building represents, represents uh, the capitalist world and the conveyor belt of people going through or kind of like um the general working man who works works hard and um puts his invests his money and then underneath what you can't see is that the foundations of the building the big shiny building are actually rotten and um eventually it's going to collapse and it's kind of like what capitalism is like you know it 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 needs continuous growth and that's not possible so at some point it breaks and when it breaks, the people who created all the, it all, they just go away and start start again. They build a new building, and the 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 people that are buried in all the debris 
or the general working man, you know, who's paid into his pensions and shit like that. Yeah, so uh, I know you guys have a single uh, for Turn the Tide, and I saw the music video for it uh, with the animations. Uh, when, when you guys are like deciding on singles, like what factors, is it your decision or does the record label give you hints of what they think the single should yeah, be? Yeah, they, they give us their opinion and then we have our ideas and sometimes they match and sometimes we make some compromises, you know, so this one was easy. We, we said turn the tide and everyone went, yeah, great. So it's um we really like the riff at the start, you know, it comes comes in head first and then doesn't relent. Yeah, no, it, it has that classic like heavy metal sound. Uh the riffing, uh the way the you know, the your singer, the vocals, he can hit those high notes. Uh uh yeah, I think it's it's good that you're a band and you know you stay true to your sound and uh, you you don't follow trends. You're doing what you've always done, and I think a lot of people like that. That you know you kept through your uh, your sound, and you just do what you do. Yeah, we do. We're doing what we love. We absolutely love what we do. We we do, and um, that's what we're going to continue to do. I think we have a another thing that we have in you know on our side is that um, we're not a young band trying to make it or get anywhere. You know. We're just playing music that we love playing, and, and if people like it, great. If people don't, we're still enjoying doing it. <laughs> so do you think, uh, like, having uh, been like that, it's less pressure for you guys? It's like, we're just going to do what we do. Like, if people yeah. like it, cool. If not, then we'll move on. Yeah, very much so. I mean, we, we were really affected. I, I, I was 17 when we did Court in the Act. And then when we put all that work in and then we bring out an album that we think is like a game changer, like it sounds different all the other new wave of British heavy metal bands. And we really thought we'd done something special. And then the first two reviews we get, it. one of the reviews said um, we were incompetent as musicians. <laughs> I, I always, Which sort of, I, you know, it I sort wonder, of upsets you a little bit when you're young. Yeah, was the person who wrote that a musician himself? Because... Like if you're if you're a reviewer, like I review music, but I'm not a musician. I cannot say I cannot say something like that because I can't play music. I, I don't know. Um, and it's kind of the opposite of what we are as well. All right, we were young and uh, we recorded the album in like a week, so there were, there were little parts of it that were um, maybe it's a bit loose. But you know what we were actually playing was a lot, a lot above what most bands were doing at the time. Technically, yeah. yeah. And something good about, you know, you this is your first record with Metal Blade. I think Metal Blade really has a great eye on, like, they sign new, like, all type of bands, like newer bands, different styles. But they also have a lot of, like, bands that, you know, that have been around for a long time. And I, and I think they let you guys be yourself. You know, it's not that that type of record label that wants to change a band. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be impossible to try and do that with us now because we're we're, we're set in our ways and um, we 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 only, we'll only do it the way we like. But yeah, they've accommodated that and it's they're, they're great to work with. Yeah. So, <clears throat> do you enjoy? Uh, do you prefer like doing the recording of the music, or do you prefer when you go and play this stuff live? Uh, it's always been about the gigs for me. I, I love playing live. Uh, I enjoy the studio as well, but for me, it's actually um, when you put the, the songs down in the studio, um, you haven't actually really tried to perform them. You, you, you've learned them and rehearsed them and played them, but you haven't performed them. You've performed them like as, as a piece of music, but you haven't performed them in a, in a sort of a live way. And I think the performance is where I get the biggest buzz. Yeah, no, I, I, I would imagine so. And plus this this type of heavy metal is meant to be played live. You know, it's like where you yeah. get that energy. So the album is going to be out in a few weeks. Uh, what are the immediate plans once this record is out? Are you guys going to be doing some tours? Uh, Album release show. What was what? 
what are the immediate plans for for say we actually the the release of the album was delayed a little bit because um the our engineer that was working on it uh, when we were doing the mixing he mm. he took ill so we had a few weeks out so it, it should have been out at the beginning of the month and it's coming out in the middle of the month um we're actually starting on tour next week in the UK on um the 4th in Manchester um, so we're doing a UK tour for six or seven dates, and then we're going over to Europe to do a full European tour. And that's when the, the day the album comes out, the 13th, and the tour starts, starts on the 14th in Europe. But okay. um, next week, uh, we start uh, the UK tour, and Satan have never toured the UK. <laughs> this is our wow. first tour in the UK. We've only played like one-off shows. <laughs> That's incredible that you're from there it and you've never played there. Yeah, we've played, we've toured America a few times, South America, we've been to Japan, all over Europe, and we've never played the UK, like toured the UK. So we're actually going up to Scotland and playing in Glasgow and then going over to Ireland and playing in Belfast and Dublin and then coming back and going down to London. And, uh, it's a few shows and it's the first time ever. No, yeah, that, that's... <laughs> That's kind of interesting that you haven't played there. So for you, Steve, uh, being, you know, playing guitar, like in this new album, do you have like a, so what's your song that you have your favorite riff from this record? Right. Definitely my favorite riff is on um, Sacramental Right. And Russ, Russ wrote the riff and um, it took me a while to master it. <laughs> it's tricky to play, you know, the the fingering. It's not it's not the speed of it or anything. It's the the fingering and the and the the music is so fantastic. It's not a common way to play, and uh, it took me a while to master it. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, yeah, that's that's a winner. You know, the riff is fantastic, and we're a riff based band. And I remember playing the riff to me um, about a year or so ago. And think and wondering why well, what's, what what sort of song is going to be made out of that, you know? And then when we created the song from the riff, it was fantastic. One of my favorites on the album. Nice. So yeah, you, yeah, it, you what you nailed it. You know, you're a riff driven band, uh, and that's you know I think that's very important because uh, uh, there's some bands that don't do that much riffing. They do like uh, more groove oriented, but yeah. I think I. A great metal song with riffing is is great. Like you remember that those riffs that you they stay in your brain and you remember them. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're about, and that's what we're trying to do every every time. We're, we're trying to give the the fans some new riffs to stick in their heads. <laughs> yeah, no, right on. You know, uh, so Steve, so obviously you're uh, you the album is almost out. You're uh, getting ready to do tours. Uh, uh, so. Are are you guys like? Do you guys like when it comes back to like the writing mode for this? How, is it? Uh, do you guys take a long time in writing when writing records, or what is the approach that the band takes? We're we're sort of writing all the time, like um, on the last album um, because of COVID and we had more time to think about it. We spent a lot of time paying attention to detail on that album, and there were a couple of songs and a few riffs and stuff left over from that that album on Earth of Earth Infernal. But normally we we just write 10 songs and uh they're thrown away by before they actually become a song. Mm. You know, we write a few riffs and then if the riffs don't inspire us to, to create a song from them, then they're thrown away anyway. So we tend to just write 10 songs and they're the 10 songs for the album. And um Frantic Zero, for instance, that was a, a song called, it was in a work in progress on the last album. We had a different title for it. It was a uh, Here Aftermath. Okay. And it was a different song, you know, and um, and then we messed around with it. We weren't sure about it. So it sort of got put on the back burner. So the first thing we worked on was that one when we finished the last album. So it's the process is always ongoing, you know. We don't sort of have any spell of time when we're not writing. And then sort of write everything together. It's always just being done as we go, you know. You start off with a riff and then create things around the riff and then change them until they, they mold into a piece of music, you know. And it's a good thing that 
you had a song that was unfinished, but instead of throwing it away, you kept it around and worked on it this time and made it work. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know we know when the riff's good. So if if the if what we put with the riff doesn't doesn't quite match or doesn't feel comfortable, then we know and then we put it on the back burner and then we go back to it and go, well, that was a good riff. What else can we do with it? You know? And uh yeah, we tend we t we tend we tend to not, not really have anything that we throw away totally, you know. Okay, yeah, th that's good. So, uh, so Steve, you know, I I want to thank you for you know taking some time of your night uh, to chat with me uh, from uh, you know the UK here to Puerto Rico. Uh, so before uh, I let you go, uh, anything you like to say to the Satan fans? Uh, just that we can't wait to get out there and tour and see you guys and watch us play. And we'll have a beer afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. So, uh, Couchers, you heard it here. The new uh, Satan album is going to be out this September the 14th. Songs in Crimson, out through Metal Blade Records. I'll put the link for people who want to pre-order the album. Uh, do so. So, Steve, I uh, hope you have a great night. And until next time, Couchers. This is Hector, the shield dude on a couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.